Welcome back to my online learning sessions. Today's short session on business law starts with a chapter on meaning and essentials of contract. Before we deep dive into the topic, let's broadly understand the term law. Laws or statutes are guidelines meant for proper governance, fair treatment and justice without discrimination to ensure peaceful coexistence of man in a dynamic world. So what is law? Law means a set of rules enforced by the state to control and regulate the conduct of people to protect their property and contractual rights with a view to securing justice, peaceful living and social security. I'm sure you have already heard terms like international law, constitutional law, criminal law, civil law, etc. So why should one know about laws? Let's take an example. Arjun travels in a train without ticket. Hmm, that's not good. He cannot plead that he was not aware of the rule regarding purchase of ticket. Let's take the case of Smitha driving a scooter without a driving license. She cannot plead that she was not aware of the traffic rule regarding the obtaining of a driving license. Therefore, it is imperative for us to be cognizant of rules and regulations in areas where law has its say. What is mercantile law or commercial law? This is not a separate branch of law, but a subset of civil law. Yes, a subset, a branch. It deals with rights and obligations of merchants involved in mercantile transactions related to mercantile property. This includes laws pertaining to various contracts, partnership, companies, negotiable instrument, insurance, carriage of goods, arbitration, etc. Let's now take a look at the sources of mercantile law in India. Number one, English mercantile law. English laws are based on customs and usages of merchants in England and forms the primary source of Indian mercantile law. Number two, Indian statute law. The various acts passed by the Indian legislature, like the Indian Contract Act of 1872, the Sale of Goods Act of 1930, the Indian Partnership Act of 1932, the Negotiable Instruments Act of 1881, the Companies Act of 1856, are all examples of Indian statute law. The year next to the names of those laws would indicate when exactly the law had come into being. The third one is judicial decisions. Past judicial decisions of English courts and Indian courts also become a source of law. They become a referral point when judges pass orders on similar cases. And finally, number four, customs and usages. Section one of the Indian Contract Act 1872, as well as the Negotiable Instruments Act of 1881, provides directives on usage of custom of trade, as well as local language usage in an instrument, respectively. A law of contract. Law of Contract, as per the Indian Contract Act 1872, deals with general principles of law governing all type of contracts. It also covers special provisions relating to special contracts like bailment, pledge, indemnity, guarantee and agency. Let's take a few real life examples. When we purchase newspaper, or a packet of milk from a vendor, an implied contract comes into being, though there is no exchange of legally written documents. In another case, when we ride a bus, the ticket purchase becomes an evidence of a contract entered into with a transport company, 
The same applies when you travel by train or by air. That's all in this session. We shall deal with the meaning of contract and its classification in the next one. Thank you for watching. Happy learning.